if you consider just one can with some flow coming in, say some flow rate Q in, and the flow leaving through the orifice, call that Q out, we derived this basic equation dV dt uh, as a state equation. As you can see, it's only a function of the, of the state variable v and a system parameter k, which if, if you go back through the slides previously presented, uh, you can see where that is sort of a composite of different parameters, parameters related to how the constitutive relation for how we would calculate the flow out of the orifice, um, which depends on the area of the orifice as well as the contraction coefficient and the density of the fluid, and of course the pressure drop. And then the pressure itself can be related to the capacitance, the tag capacitance C for this constant area tank. So those are things that you can go back and review with regard to the basic model. The nice thing about having this, this basic first order equation is, as we showed, you can derive experiments for determining these values of K for each can. Um, I'm going to show first a, uh, a simple simulation for that one can. Um, here's the front panel for a, a VI that I've already built. As you can see on the front panel, you can put in the can diameter, the, the, the can orifice. These are things easily measured. And then what's calculated in, you know, in this uh, VI is the, the K1 for this can number one, say, which is the, the flow coefficient. We also can specify the, the initial volume, and then there's simulation parameters. When we look at the block diagram, you can see I've constructed a formula node that has, from the input uh, um, on the front panel, um, takes, takes all those, those, those input parameters and calculates K1, passes K1 down into this um, this while loop that contains a control uh, and simulation loop. The control and simulation loop um, is, is, is going to be where you construct your block diagram for simulation. As you can see, I've, 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 I've uh, put a comment here. This is the basic ODE dv1 dt equals qn minus q1. qn is 0 in this case. q1 is being computed in this formula node. And note within this formula node, I've put in um, uh, in, in, uh, in a text form, the, uh, the calculation of Q1, which depends on V1. We also need to be checking that V1 hasn't uh, gone below zero, because that means the can is empty. So we want at that point to make Q1 equal to zero. So this conditional is important. And one way of, of making sure that, that when you're simulating the system that you correctly compute Q1 is to use a formula node this way. Um, so when the integrator um, uh, passes V1, you check that and compute Q1 and pass it back and so on. And this uh, will simulate from some initial time to some final timing until it uh, re you know, reaches that final time and, 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 and empties. Uh, note I've also put some conversions on here. For example, on the, on the, the front panel, you, you can input volume in terms of say values you're using in the lab in terms of milliliters, convert that into cubic meters. Most of the calculations I'll do here are in SI. You can decide to do this in any way you want. Um, and then when I plot it, I also plot it in milliliters, so I need to convert that. So there's a little conversion nodes that I use here. I dropped the simulation time node in here. You can find that actually from uh, the uh, control and simulation submenus under utilities you can find simulation time. Now, why would I want simulation time? Well, let's say you were uh, trying to find uh, the value that your simulation predicts the can will empty, and you want to compare that to your experiment. You could actually, in your simulation, because uh, the time isn't explicit here unless you pull it out of this little VI. So you can wire this in, say, somewhere, and, and for example, if you determine when V1 goes to zero here, you can pass that time out. And so you'll have an easy way to compare to your experimental measurements, say if you're trying to validate your, your uh, coefficients against your simulation model and so on, or vice versa. Okay, so um, study this. This is one way of building a single can, and you can extend this and build a two-can simulation rather easily. The nice thing about having this while loop is that this simulation runs continuously. Let me go ahead and run it for you so you can see. So if I run this as a 
it's, it's going to be running continuously solving from zero to some final time that I specify here. And note you can then use the slider uh, to um, change your initial volume. And note that the time to empty is changing. Um, it's not being put out anywhere unless you put that explicit. And then to stop it, you have to stop button here. The loop delay just gives it a little bit of delay so that it visualizes the uh, simulation. Okay, so I'm going to stop that.